Hey y'all, it's finally time. We're gonna upgrade the pump on this Chinese HPG Mini X. I'm gonna show you step by step how I did this, and that it was super easy, and you can do it too. Let's get it going. If you want to see what the difference might be after upgrading your pump, first I recommend watching this video from Stickwall Farm. They showed before and after video comparisons of the difference in speed and power. It's kind of what convinced me to do it. Next, I got to leave a shout out to Kyle Adams. He had upgraded the pump on his excavator and it was similar to mine. It wasn't a how to video, but he had the part number of the pump and where he got it listed in the description. I ordered the exact one he had listed. I went to surpluscenter.com and ordered the pump. I figured there was at least a decent chance it would fit mine, and what the heck, it was only 150 bucks. Alright, let's do a quick cost breakdown before we get started. The pump was 152 two hoses, 12 bucks each, and a hose in and a crimp at the shop for 43 bucks. Grand total, $221.52. Here we go. We're going to do the pump today. Been pretty excited about doing this. And it's about darn time. So, let's take a look, see. As you can see, I laid out some parts, but we'll get to that in a second. The pump itself is right in here in the back. It's right here. This guy, it has two pipes. One pipe on there coming out, and one hose here coming out. And then it's got one bolt right here, and one bolt let's see right over here and then these these hoses just this one right here connects to the hydraulic fluid tank which is right over there let's see if we can get a shot of that uh, a little sideways there's that's where it goes in the tank right down there the other hose goes up to the controls let's go take a look Already unbolted this, so it goes right up in here, and then goes up here, and then right in the front. Got this unbolted already. It ends up being this pipe. Notice the marks on here, and I made sure to line those up just so I could get them tightened the way they were. But basically, yeah, right there, pretty easy. And this this side. You don't even have to, uh, you can use the same fitting. So hopefully on your excavator, you can use the same hoses and just replace the ends if you need to and it'll still be long enough. All right, first and foremost, you got the pump. This is what it looks like, gear on one side. On the other, I've, I've kind of already handled this uh, and kind of fitted it a little bit so I already know what it's gonna do. But on the tank side, the low pressure, you got this bigger, and, and these just go on the end of the hose and this one goes on the other side it's a little smaller so all the videos I watched or everything else said almost guaranteed you're gonna have to get uh, different size couplers you can probably keep the hose but you're gonna have to adapt it to fit the new pump because it's almost hundred percent not gonna be the right size so every excavator is different you'll just have to see what you can see when you get in there all right, some tools you're going to need for this. I uh, need some pretty big wrenches. 32 to fit the big one, 27 and a 24. Uh, and then you got uh, this little guy, I believe. Uh, looks like 5 16 for the uh, bolts that bolted onto the frame. Um, yours, of course, is going to be different. And these metric ones, I believe, are the exact fit, but you can probably get away with some uh, standard sizes that are close enough because these really aren't on that tight. All right, first things first. Um, obviously, there's a tank full of hydraulic fluid over here, that square box right there. So I figured I would undo the pipe at this end and then drain it out the back. Now, uh, just be ready, wear gloves, have something to catch it. But theoretically, you could just take this off and hold it up and you probably would be able to keep the fluid from leaking out too much. The only issue is, is I know for a fact, I'm gonna have to take the whole hose off 
and take it to the shop to get them to fit for adapters, couplings, and I am kind of assuming I might have to put a new end on the hose and I don't have any equipment for it. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna have to drain the tank. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Let's get this baby off. All right, here we go. Hope you can see this. I'll try to stay out of the way as much as I can. These aren't really that tight. It's just a matter of which one you undo first. Not too bad at all. All right, good idea to put a little bucket under there to catch it. There we go. Okay, all right. Now, it would be time to get these two off. There's one here and one here, except for you can't get it in there, so you're gonna, we're gonna have to take off these fittings first on both sides and then take this off. So let's get to that. All right, so they are already loosened a little bit. Should be able to get this off by hand, so here we go. All right, looks like I need to move this out of the way. So I'm gonna move this. Okay, we got that out of the way, so now we can get in there. Okay, let's finish taking this off. Okay, a little bit of leakage. Get that out. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, I did cheat a little bit on this one. It was hard to get in there, and just to break it, I put a socket on it. So. All right, let's get this off. Now you can get at these real easy and they come off just like that. All right, let's pull this baby out. So we got. Okay. A little tight, but look at that. Came right out. That's all we're talking about. All we gotta do is put the new one in. Okay. So, I had to take this whole hose off after I drained the tank and I took it to the shop and they put a whole new end on it because the thread size from China were just so messed up they could not find anything that would fit. Um, and so once they put that on there I brought it back in but then I had another issue I couldn't make this could make this L shaped bend. So I went back and had them get me a, oh, I call that a 45 degree angle. And so that allowed me to make the bend and go right into the, to the uh, pump. The other one, as you can see over here, all I had to do is to get an adapter for that one. Um, I did take the hose off up top of the control and just took it into the shop and they, the guy at the counter just got me an adapter that would fit this and then go into the pump. So basically we got 
everything ready to go back on. We got our adapters, new hose, got a 45 to go on, so let's put this baby back in. Now it's a little bit tricky. It's hard to decide whether to put the fittings on first, which I actually did, but then you can't get the mounting bolts. You can't get to the mounting bolts, so I ended up taking this off, uh, taking the fittings out, and I figured I'll just tighten them up after I put it on. So here we go. Slide it in. Little bit of angle there. Let me see if I can get a shot of this. That's what we're looking at right there. So we just have to go in at an angle. Okay. And look at that. It's pretty much it. Now all you gotta do is put the mounting screws back in. There's a spider coupler. If we can get that. I don't know if you can see that. Like right in there, you just have to make sure that they're connected. But all in all, that was pretty easy. Okay, let's put the mounting screws back in. Get them started here by hand. Let's do the opposite side first. Can't really see that too good, but there we go. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit because it's just easier to get the socket on there. Too hard. Notice the marks on here, and I made sure to line those up just so I could get them tightened the way they were. But basically, yeah, right there, pretty easy. And this this side, you don't even have to. Uh, you can use the same fitting. So hopefully, on your excavator, you can use the same hoses and just replace the ends if you need to, and it'll still be long enough. All right, now let's get this other one on. Just screw it on by hand at first. There's a nice 45. There's no way I could have, you can see, there's no way I would have been able to bend this around. So this was perfect. And these are the couplings that you just have to, with yours. It's a little tricky on how you decide what to do first because you pretty much have to hold one screw in the other and all the way down but to get this in we're going to do this right now so here we go.
Okay. Got that all tightened up. Let's do the other side. got to put the, hat, the lifter back on right there and then fill this baby back up with a drop. Alright, time to fill this baby up. Right there. I'm using this Super Tech Heavy Duty Hydraulic. Uh, if anybody has a better better uh, suggestion for this let me know because uh, I would obviously put the I like to put the best stuff in it but anyways let's top it off Okay, time to fire it up and look for leaks. wrap this up uh, everything looks good there's no leaks uh, everything's working good the boom I can tell and the bucket is faster I don't even have to put it on full rpms as a matter of fact I need to slow it down because it was too fast which means the track speed is gonna be off the charts which I can already tell it is a uh, little spoiler alert uh, I've already used it on another project let me tell you, I leveled out a base for an above ground pool, which probably would have taken me forever with the slow track speed. But since this baby's so fast, I knocked that sucker out quick. All right, let's do a final wrap up. The main thing with this video was to show you a little bit of close ups, a little bit of how to two, which basically show you that it's pretty easy. And if I can do it, you can do it. This project wasn't too hard. Uh, I really didn't run into any issues simple things not too hard to get around um, the track speed alone is what I was looking for and I'm absolutely 100% satisfied with the track speed It's super fast uh, stay tuned for my next video when we do the pool base and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, feel free to leave comments questions I'll see if I can get to them and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching and tally ho